I'm Evel from Airways Africa Radio and TV Network. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, the psalmist says so wonderfully in Psalm 42, I'm going to read it to you. I'm not going to read the whole psalm, but I'm going to speak to you about the presence of God and about really entering in His Holy of Holies and about the rivers of living waters that will flow forever in our innermost being. It says here, as the deer pants for the streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? You see, it is important to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, our everything. You know, early, says the, the psalmist also in 63, that will I search the Lord and my soul longs for it. The whole Psalms speaks about how we should really, you know, the Levites, they were the psalmist. And this Psalm 42 uh, says that the, 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 the tribe of Korah, of, of the, the, the Levite tribe, they wrote, actually, it's the son, sorry, of Korah. Korah was a Levite who led rebellion against Moses. Who led a rebellion against Moses. They, he was one of the Levites. So, you know, every one of us should be a worshipper. Not just those that sing, uh, 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 that is a musician, a gospel mus musician, but every one of us. And as, as I said, you, your, your, so your soul must thirst and be hungry after God, just as the psalmist right here. A thirst for God when you feel lonely or depressed, especially especially when you are lonely or depressed. Meditate on God's kindness and love and also His goodness. And as I said, they, the, the sons of Korah who were temple musicians and assistants, they were, they were in the presence of God when the Holy Spirit gave them this word. And I'm reading it to you. It says here, uh, you know, he spoke to his own soul. Why are you downcast for those that are depressed? Oh my soul, why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. As I said, Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our deliverer. He's our everything. And my soul calls deep unto deep. In the roar of your waterfalls that is the depth thing of in the presence of god it's awesome to be there you know you because you will actually i especially chose this place because of the of the quietness here and as you can hear the water the water that is streaming here by the stream that we are standing here and it says here deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls all your waves and breakers have swept over me by day the Lord directs his love, at night his song with in me. I pray to the God to the God of my life. I say to my God, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. I want to encourage you to stay in the living Word of God. This, this psalmist that wrote this psalm, he was downcast. His soul was downcast. Because when your spirit man is downcast, you will be downcast. Because it is, and, but when you enter into the presence of God, you will feel the presence of God. You will know the presence of God. You will feel that home feeling. As I talk down to you, I feel the home fear, the home tender uh, uh, love of the presence of God in this quietness where I stand with, with, a, with my husband, that's a cameraman. You know, it's awesome to feel the tangible presence of God. And I can just encourage you to stay in His presence. Don't ever come out there because it is His presence that brings for, that fullness of joy and that brings that strength because it is there where he strengthens you the holy spirit i'm talking about the presence of the holy spirit because it is there where he strengthens you and uplift you as a man or a woman of god whoever you are a saint of god you don't have to be called to be a preacher or a teacher 
You can be called just to encourage somebody. And I want to encourage you today. Don't be down, down cause. Speak to yourself. Say, don't be down cause. Because the spirit within doesn't want us to be like that. You see, the Holy Spirit is also a jealous spirit as the word of God says to us in the New Testament. It says he watches over us with a tender jealousy. He loves us and he cares for us. He doesn't want us to be down cause. He wants us to surrender everything to him. To to uh, um, to supply and to uh, you know with supplication, you know with your your in, if you, if you enter the, the 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 presence of God, you 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 give uh, you you worship Him with everything within in within within inside you, and you you love Him because He's He's real. The the, the Holy Spirit is real. He's a person. He also he, you can also uh, uh, let the Holy Spirit uh, um, be. Um, I will say that I want to choose the right word. You can also let the Holy Spirit, because uh, uh, He's got feelings as well. Yes, because He doesn't want us to be the uncast, because He's God. God is Spirit and He's holy and He's truth. And, and He knows when we are the uncast. And we've got all the right to speak to ourselves, you know, to say to ourselves, don't be the uncast. Speak to your soul, say to it, don't be the uncast. You see, because as I said, the psalmist says here, it says here, why are you downcast, my soul? Why is it the serve within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And I'm glad that I can share with you in this uh, Psalm 42 as a deer. You know, a deer, if you, uh, if you look at a deer, it's, it's, a, it's an innocent deer, they innocent uh, animals. And they, if they want to drink water, they come and they will drink water at the streams. Because it is there that, that their, their thirst will be quenched. And uh, when Jesus met the woman at the well, uh, that, that uh, you will also find in the New uh, Testament, in the four Gospels, where Jesus met with the woman at the well, and he knew that she was thirsty. He knew about her, the Samaritan woman, when he walked through that town. And she was sitting there at a pit of where they draw water, and uh, she was offering him some water and that and he said to her no i can give you something better i can give you water rivers of living water that will never be quenched it is for eternity and that you also find in revelation 22 i will read from verse 1 about the the, the, the you know if you are in the presence of god there's always clarity there's always everything is crystal clear but in the presence of god you know, you can also, you will, your senses will be so open and will be so wide open and you can also see in the spiritual realm. It talks about the river of life. Now, I'm talking about the river of life, that's the eternal river. Of, and that is what Jesus told the woman at the well when he said to her, you will never go thirsty, you will never go dry, but you will drink of the eternal water. Because they were a, a tribe, the Samaritans were a tribe that still believed that the Messiah must come. And when Jesus spoke to her, she, and, and then she recognized him and because Jesus said to her who she he was really the true Messiah. She ran into the, to the, uh, the township where she lived in, in, Samarit, in, in Samaria and she went to go tell the other Samaritans that Jesus is alive. You know, and that is what I want to bring out to you. And then uh, in Revelation 22 from verse 1, Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God. And of the land down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curses. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will, will serve Him. They will see His face and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamb or a light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever with him. You see, these are the words that are trustworthy, says the Lord to, uh, this was John the, the, the revelator that saw this. And uh, this is, uh, uh, so God of the Spirit of the prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. All right. So the river of life, as I said, is clear as crystal. This you cannot find on earth. You can go to any type of river. You will see there's a little bit of, 
half of dirt in it. You understand? But the rivers in heaven are clear as crystal. Just as your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ must be as clear as crystal. The minute you become a born-again believer in Christ, that you accepted Him as a personal Savior, He brings clarity in your life. He brings uh, uh, things that are in right standing with Him. He brings, uh, if, you know, your mind will be sound as well. If you are mentally uh, uh, disturbed or mentally depressed or mentally not right in your mind, God brings clarity. You understand? He brings clarity in your whole inner man. He changes you, He transforms you as the Word of God Say, We cannot do it. By ourselves, we cannot do it. We can speak to ourselves and don't, because we should know who our true identity in Christ must be. Who we are in Christ. You understand what I'm saying here? Because the rivers of, live, of, of, of life, it will not just give you life here on earth, but gives you eternal life. Because if you die now in Christ, you already have life and life in abundance. As the word tells us in the book of John, John 10.10, 10, it says that the Lord has come to give us life and life in abundance. And then the other th uh, 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 verse also in that same scripture in John 10.10 10 says, but that the devil has come, he's got three functions. Number one, he comes to rob you away from your eternal inheritance or from your faith in Christ. Don't allow him. You have your faith in Christ, standing firm in the Word of God and in faith. Believe the Word of God. Believe that His truth of the Word is our road map on earth. It tells us everything. And God gives clarity in His Word. You see, the whole, God is Spirit and His truth and His holy. That's why we, we call Him Holy Spirit. You understand? And then you, you, you should have communion with God. You should talk to him also. You should, if you, anything that you need, you can ask him. The word of God, every word in the four gospels is written in red. And <clears throat> that is a, 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 the words that Jesus spoke. Also here in Revelation. Because Jesus is a resurrected life. It's because of him that we have eternal life. Alright? Because he came to die for us at the cross of Calvary. If you were born again believer, you believe in the, the resurrected power of the Lord Jesus Christ, that He died at the cross, He rose the third day, then you should have no doubt. You should have faith. You shouldn't have doubt as the unbelievers have. You should have faith, believing that we have eternal life. And believing that, 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 that God is real. And believing that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life forever. That we have eternal life, as I said. So don't allow the devil to rob you from your eternal inheritance in Christ. Don't allow him to rob you from having uh, communication with the Holy Spirit. Don't allow him to rob you from, from spending time in his presence. Be like a Levite. They, they worship God continuously. They praise God continuously. They stayed in his presence. Not just by making music, but they were talking to God. They had fellowship with God. That's why God knew the importance of, of, of relationship, of, of, of having communion with, the, with us through His Son, Jesus Christ. He wants to see also His Son inside us. Remember, the Word of God says in the book of Romans 8, it says here, there in uh, 14, Romans 8, 14 says, those, that are, uh, those are true sons of God is those that are spirit-filled and spirit-led. Only those that are spirit-filled and spirit-led, those are the true sons or daughters of God. And I'm glad that I'm a true God, a true daughter of the, of the Most High. I'm glad that I, I serve Jesus Christ, the Most High, the one that has given us eternal life. The one that has died at the cross of Calvary, that is through Him that we have eternal life. As I said, your name if you were the minute that you confess that you were a sinner, because we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the minute that you confess with your mouth that you are a sinner and that you, God must forgive you for your sins, you mustn't just stay in there. You ask God to repent from it and you stay away from it. You stay away, you turn away. It's like turning around and allow the Holy Spirit to make the transformation in your life, to change you because the Word of God said He will transform us and change us in His image. He will renew our mind also in, in Him as well. Because then your mind is crystal clear as I talked about uh, the river, uh, as I read to you concerning the river of life that is clear as crystal in the one verse of, of uh, 
Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river, that is to John. John he was one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was at the island of Pot, uh, Patmos that he, he had this revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the land down the middle of the great street of the city. And that is the new Jerusalem. That is the new Israel. It's a new city. You see, God has it prepared for us. I want to encourage you to stay in His presence, to tap in that anointing, to know that God is real. Every day of your life, know your true identity in Him. Know who you are. Don't allow the devil to rob you from your eternal inheritance in Christ. That is my encouraging word for you. It says in heaven, they will see his face and his name, that is Jesus Christ's name, will be on our foreheads. There will be no more night. You see, because there will always just be light. They, they, will, they will not need the light of the lamp of the light of the sun. Because as on earth, I can't look in the sun because I need my spectacles because of the sun will dry my eyes. But when you're in heaven, you will be able to look on God's face because then you will be in your glorified body. Because the glory of God is so brilliant, it's so precious, it's so glorious that you can't even look in it. The same thing you can't look, you know, with your eyes in the sun that God created. Because God is the creator of the moon, the sun, the stars, as it says. He's the creator of all things. In the beginning he says it. Go back to Genesis as well. Go back. There is where everything started. Amen. Because as I, as I read to you, then the angel showed me the river of angels. Of, of, of the water of life that we will have eternal life and it is as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God stay in that presence stay in the uh, inner uh, 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 in your inner uh, uh, in the inner court instead of the outer court stay in the presence of God it's so important and as I said uh, uh, and we uh, as I read about the eternal life in Christ that in heaven that there will be no more night there will they will not need the light of lamb or the light of the sun for the God will give them light we have the light already inside us on earth but no one can see it because they can't you know because they look through they look through their natural eyes as I can look at the camera now and uh, speaking to you you can see my face but I can't see your face but the Holy Spirit knows about you because God can see all things from heaven he knows all things from heaven and everything that you do is recorded in heaven just as my husband is doing all the recording of what we, all the word and the, the spoken and the written word that we speak to you the, from the Bible. And I want to encourage you to stay in his word, to stay in his presence, to stay in him. And uh, we will reign forever and ever with the Lord. It's so wonderful, you know, because this is what the Lord wants you to be. That you must be his true son. As I said to you earlier on concerning that, or the true daughter, if you're male or female, just like because God knows us who we are in Him. He loves us. And we must love Him too. We must love Him back. We can't just receive love, love, love. He also wants us to love Him back on earth because He's precious. There's no one like Him. There's no one like Jesus. There's no one like our Father. He's precious. Amen. And I want to say to you that uh, the Word of God says that the tree of life is like the tree of life in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 2.9. After Adam and Eve have sinned, they were forbidden to eat from the tree of life. Okay, as you know the story there. Because they could not have eternal life as long as they lived. They were under sin's control. So don't allow the sin of this world, you know, to take control of you. But allow the Holy Spirit because it's holy and pure. God is holy and pure. But because of the forgiveness of sin through the blood of Jesus Christ, there will be no more evil or sin in the new city of Jerusalem. There will be eternal life. We will be able to eat the, freely from the tree of life. Because in that time, in, in the Old Testament, in the, the book of Genesis 2, it says there that the tree of life is like a tree of life. And... Adam and Eve had a chance to have eternal life, but they uh, break the rule because when God gave us a mandate or a rule to live or a commandment to live on earth, then we must obey Him. 
and they disobeyed God and they ate of the forbidden fruit and uh, that, that brought sin into their life because of disobedience. Amen. So uh, it says here, uh, we will be able to eat freely from the tree of life when sin control over us. We will, okay, when sin's control over us is destroyed and our eternity with God is secure. So I know I've got, my security is in God, the Holy Spirit. I know that. So that is why the nations, they need healing over all, uh, all, all nations, every tongue and every tribe. The Word of God also say that if we confess with us, our mouth that we sinners, that He's able to forgive us and He'll set us free. But then you must, wherever nation, or wherever, whatever nation you are, tongue or tribe, then you must be able to confess it with your mouth and Jesus will set you free. Amen. So I can just say, uh, as the Word of God says here, no more will there be a curse means that nothing a curse will be in the presence of God. This fulfill Zechariah's prophecy. If you will go read it in Isaiah 14, 11. Amen. So we're not going to turn there. Another time we can speak about it. But it is important to know that we have eternal life in Christ Jesus. Because he was the one that came to break the curse of everything. Of sin. Of our sinfulness. He took it upon him at the cross of Calvary. And, he, and he's a resurrected God. Amen. So it says here, I'm also going to read further in the same book of Revelation 22. It says here, Behold, I'm coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecies in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I've heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of, my, of the angel who had showed them to me. But he said, Do not do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and all who keep the words of this book, worship God. You see, even the, the angels in heaven know, knew that. They know it because they know that God is, is a creator of all nations. He created of all creatures. He created of everything, even of the angels. And they are subject to God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So it says here, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book because the time is near. Let him who, is, who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I'm coming soon and our reward is with me. I will give to everyone according to what he has done. And the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed is those who wash their robes so they may have the right to the tree of life. And may go through the gates to the, into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexual immorally, immoral, sorry, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So God doesn't want us to be false, but that we must be truthful in Him. Especially when you know your true identity in Him. Especially when you know who you are in Christ. Nothing false can take over by the Spirit of God, because God is holy and His Spirit. And I believe whom the Spirit set free are free indeed. And then Jesus says this in verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. And Jesus said, I'm the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The Spirit of the bride say, come, and let him who hears says, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. So God will take away from him the share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. And it says in verse 21, the last verse, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with God's people and with all nations. The grace with everyone. Because every people God created, all nations, belongs to God and not to the devil. So say no to sin, say no to evil things, stay away from evil, stay away from wicked things, stay away from falsehood and believe in the power and the resurrected power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And surrender your life to Him fully and live the life in Him. And uh, remember that uh, Revelation, above all, is a book of hope. But remember, the best hope is in Christ Jesus. Because He is the way, 
the truth and the everlasting life. And in that I greet you in that wonderful name and precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be back soon and continue talking about the truthful life in Christ Jesus. The L st stands for let and the I stands for it and the F stands for flow and the E stands for eternity. So let it flow for eternity. That is a life in Christ. Amen. So we will be back for more of the word of God. Be blessed and thank you for listening. And uh, turn your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of all. And he is a soon coming King. Amen. God bless you till the next.